So you want to uh, full-time RV. That is exciting. Uh, where are you going to stay? Because now you got to figure that all out. Uh, it's not necessarily just one spot. So are you going to boondock? Are you going to uh, stay in RV parks? Are you going to travel around? Are you going to be in vacation mode? <laughs> I mean, uh, what is your plans? We're going to talk about that today in this video. Hi, my name is David and uh, my wife Ninette and our little cat Tansy, we live full time in our uh, motorhome and we call ourselves Tigner Adventures because we want to go out and uh, see the world and uh, before we do that we kind of decided that maybe we should see what the United States has to offer and so we chose to be full time um, RVers. Now when you become a full time RVer, you have to decide where you're going to stay. Um, are you going to be in vacation mode? Some of these people, they uh, start and they're moving constantly. And within, you know, the, the year, they've put on 20,000 miles on their rig. Is that what you're going to do? Uh, because to us, full-time RVing is a state of mind and it's long-term. We're not in this vacation mode that just, I mean, last year, if you uh, watch any of our videos from last year, you'll notice that we were moving every four days because we were trying out a uh, thousand trails and trying to see, uh, you know, do reviews on them and things. And that's how they worked it. And man, I'll tell you, by the time we got to Washington, we were exhausted. That is just moving way too much. Uh, we typically like to stay at least 10 days to 14 days every place we go. Otherwise, we call that vacation mode. You're just moving from one place to the next place to the next place, and it just gets really tiring. So anyway, we're gonna talk about full-timing it in an RV resort or RV park or um, campground or something like that. We did a video just uh, uh, not too long ago right here. It was on boondocking, and we we're talking about boondocking. Boondocking is where you're parking someplace where you don't have any hookups, okay? That could be a camp here. Um, sorry campground but you don't have the hookups and things like that so what we're talking about today is going to be places that have hookups so you're gonna be able to hook up you're gonna be able to have power you're gonna be able to have water and you're gonna have sewers so you don't have to be moving around all the time if you don't uh, want to to go dump or find water and things like that uh, so today we're talking about RV parks or RV resorts now I think the uh, word resort gets thrown around a lot uh, within the uh, you know RVing community. Um, my wife and I have a little thing <laughs> about words, all right? Uh, we see certain words and they say something and we go cha-ching, cha-ching, you know, because what they're trying to say is, you know, we're a resort and so we're worth this extra money that you're going to have to pay to stay here um, compared to just being called an RV park, all right? So be careful about the names. A lot of them don't mean a lot. <laughs> so um, if you watched our videos uh, here, this one, we kind of introduced where we're at right now. We're at the um, uh, Sundance RV Resort. Uh, we mentioned why this is a resort. They have something going on here constantly all the time and we really like it. And because of that, that's what we're gonna kind of talk about that a little bit today and, and you know why this might be a good option for you. And then we also wanted to uh, just mention that this uh, three night special that they've got, um, they still have that until October. We have um, a number of those coupons. If you're interested, then uh, just uh, send us uh, an email. We'll be able to, with your address, and we'll get one of those out to you. Uh, you can stay here if you've never stayed here before and you are 55 years older and if your rig is less than 36 feet long. So, you know, it's an option. It's three nights free, no, there's no, you know, no gotchas, no, you know, something like you get a fill out and sign up for something. There's nothing like that involved. It's just three nights, you come in, stay and, and leave. Now, now, I say that in one way because that's how we came in. We came on one of these three night specials and we loved the resort so much and the um, Ninette fell in love with pickleball that we decided to uh, look into the work camp program here and we got involved in their work camp program and, and so we've stayed here for two years now. This is our second season being here during the winter months and uh, Yuma has been a really nice place to be. So 
there are some things about RV parks and RV resorts that we should kind of look at just a little bit to make your stay a little bit more enjoyable. Now, RV parks in general, you're typically parked right next to people. And um, so, you know, you gotta be okay with that, all right? You're typically, I mean, the resorts um, that we stay at, most of them, they're about, uh, they're only maybe at best 30 feet wide. So that's about 15 feet for your rig and another 15 feet for your patio area and where your car parks and things like that. So, you know, typically your next rig next to you is going to be like 15 to 25 feet maybe, you know, from you. And uh, so you have to be okay with that if you're gonna stay in RV parks. Um, the other thing that you gotta be, um, you know, okay with is maybe the noise or the lights or, you know, whatever, you know, because people are living, everyone's living there and sometimes you're gonna have good neighbors and sometimes you're not. And uh, one of the things I mentioned in our boondocking video was that uh, one of the things nice about boondocking is when it's not being, you're not paying any money, it's easy just to move. If you don't like your neighbors, then just move. In an RV park, you may not have that option, okay? If you have paid for a month's stay, for example, you know, sometimes they may work with you to move you to another site, but most RV parks are not gonna do that. In the case of, I think, resort living or RV park living, uh, there are some things that make living in those situations a lot better. And I, you know, in our particular case, you know, we live here at uh, Sundance RV Resort. We are work camping here for six months. And so we enjoy uh, being here. And some of the things that makes it a lot and more enjoyable is getting to know the people. So if you're a people person, you like to get out and meet people and make all kinds of friends from all over the place, then living in an RV park is one of those options that you probably really wanna look into. Um, and so that's kind of fun. And I, I took, uh, one of the things that I liked about um, Sundance is there's a lot of volunteers, uh, there's a lot of different activities going on. And because of that, um, it makes life really fun. You're, you always have something you can go do. There's lots of uh, you know, happy hours, things like that you can participate in. But there's also all kinds of activities. And so I'm gonna just take a minute here. I wanna just talk to a few volunteers uh, because you know, they're what makes the park really fun. And if you want to come to a park and um, have a lot of fun, you may wanna become a volunteer also because there's a lot of good that you can do from that. So we're gonna just take a break here just for a minute and we're gonna to talk to uh, these three different uh, volunteers. So we'll be right back. All right, so this is uh, this is pickleball tonight, and uh, we do the night little effort here. And Terry, who's from Canada, right? Yes, from Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. All right, so you had to get a plug in there. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah. Don't she, go there. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold right now, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, she organizes these little things that uh, on the evenings for pickleball and does all these little tournaments. We're doing a um, round robin right now. It's a lot of fun. And um, how long have you been doing this? Um, probably for about five years, but five years. I missed the last two years because last year, because of COVID, we weren't here, of course, and the year before, I was in Costa Rica. So, yeah, that was warm too. Yeah, but I did that. I did it for about three years before that. Okay. Here, yeah. And um, and again, that's just volunteering your time, coming out yeah. here and having fun. Right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Terry's been trying to teach me because I'm brand new <laughs> and uh, trying to learn pickleball, and she's she's a really good coach. So oh, I really do appreciate David. it. All Awesome. <laughs> You're doing great. See, she's always encouraging me. She, she tries to make it look okay. And when I come and get the score sheet at the end of the night, it'll be gone because she rips it up and throws it away. She don't even let me look at what my score is. Because it's just for fun. It's for fun. That's right. So anyway, so thanks a lot. Yes. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> Okay, we are here at the bocce ball courts. You can see there's a lot of people playing and uh, they line up here. And this whole sport here is taken care of by these two volunteers. What are you hiding back there for, Jill? I'm doing <laughs> So, uh, Bill and Jill. Yes. And uh, how long you guys uh, lived here? Because you're actual residents of, I mean, yeah, you have we, a park we, model here. Yeah, we camped here for three years and we've had the park model for two. Yeah. And yeah. then um, how long you been doing bocce ball? Uh, this is our third, third year. Third, yeah, third year. Third year? Yeah, third year doing bocce ball. Maybe we should only interviewed one because now they're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 
for a while. You guys volunteer and do this. Yes. So that's really nice of you guys to do that. We love bocce ball. It's a fun little game. And uh, what kind of got you started in this whole thing? Just wanting to see it go or something? Well, yeah, we, we came to play, and then the couple that was organizing it before us, uh, both of them had accidents during the summer. One Ooh. had a, re well, no, one had a knee replacement, and the other had a hip replacement, and they couldn't come back for the season. So they needed someone to run the program. So we volunteered because we love playing. Well, and that's what it's all about, right? Yes. Yeah. So, well, thanks a lot for your volunteering here and helping out the sport and keeping everyone safe yeah. and taking care of all the arguments. Oh, no. We have very few, if any, at all. <laughs> I know. It's a yeah. fun game. It's so. a fun game, and we play every Tuesday night and Thursday night. So and it's a also a good way to meet new people and make friends. That's right. Yeah, We have people come in just for a few days and come over and play, right? Yes, yes they, they do. Make new friends, and then next year they come back, and then it's a big family reunion. Yes. So anyway, so all right. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, this is another program that we have here at the resort, and I have Nancy here to kind of explain what it's all about and kind of educate me because I haven't been doing this either. I'm one of those lazy guys. So. Although he should be, and we have plenty of guys who do do it. Um, it's a great program. We work like heck on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with a an exercise called Tabata and then so Tuesday, this so we might have skipped a spot but this is a pool exercise right that's why the pool's in the background right yeah <laughs> yeah okay. he's not missing out in the brains <laughs> just in the workout area and yeah. then Tuesday uh, and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday we you know have a nice free form and nine o'clock on every day of the week Monday through Friday we have a tape that everybody gets a nice stretch, uh, strengthen, a uh, nice little workout. So it's a great little workout program and it starts, we have it at 8 o'clock and 8 o 9 o'clock. Uh -huh. So are they both the same? No, no, they're the, different programs. They're different programs, yes. I, I lead the 8 o'clock. The 9 o'clock is a tape so that it okay. can be done by anybody. So what I was kind of talking about was the volunteers here in the resort and Nancy volunteers to do this. Uh, out of her goodwill <laughs> and uh, so she's here every day well, not quite rain and shine you don't really do it in the rain but there's not much rain in the you know, only uh, reason we canceled once this year was the wind and it was blowing so hard we thought it might put something in, into the pool on us so. yeah and then hurt somebody right right, like, right. Un umbrellas or something like that so most of the time they say Yuma's sunny 365 days of the year I think they exaggerate, exaggerate that just a little bit but it's pretty close but uh, this is winter time even though a lot of people would think this is summer right right right, right. so um, when do you actually start this program does it kind of start and end or how does it work I like to start it around when the other program starts which is around November 1st and ending March 31st little overlap today's April Fool's Day. oh yeah April Fool's Nancy <laughs> <laughs> okay cool um, so as far as number of people that come out do you usually have a pretty good I mean this is the, the resort here you can see that the resort is uh, emptying out pretty fast around here but um, normally there's the parks full and so do you have a pretty good turnout I do I do as, especially Monday Wednesday and Friday for the high intensity I sometimes have 30 35 people Okay, um, cool. The other one is um, about 20 people at max. Okay, and as you can see, this is a pretty good sized pool and not a lot of people in it right now, but uh, we'll, um, that always changes mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then after today, then what happens? Then we'll be having the tape that plays at 9 o'clock, Monday through Friday, every day until I leave and then Believe it or not, some other volunteer will probably take it over and come down and play the tape for people. So that's what makes the whole resort life really nice is having all the volunteers, right? Uh huh. Because oh, and you know why just buy some place or park some place and do nothing? You at least you're getting out and meeting people and everyone's having fun. It's right? a wonderful way to meet people and make yeah. new friends. It is yes. Well, thanks for your service. You're and, so uh, welcome, Dave. Thank I'm you sure for all your, your service. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, so. We haven't done the water aerobics with Nancy yet, but uh, Nancy uh, volunteers also for bingo, uh, and I volunteer for bingo, and so that's how I actually got to know uh, Nancy. 
she actually volunteers for a lot of things around the resort and so she's she's a pretty fun lady to to um, know and you know it's just kind of how the resort life is so if you want to full-time and still have some type of life like that then RV parks or RV resorts are something that you may be very very happy to be part of because it's a community and one of the fun things about um, the community like if, for example if you look here at our reviews on Thousand Trails you know we have a number of different parks we went to and things like that when you join Thousand Trails then you run into a lot of the same people as you move from park to park to park and so, you know, you get to, you know, build that uh, community of uh, friendships. So anyway, I think there's a place for RV parks and RV resorts uh, for full timers, and it can be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, if you looked at some of the reviews we did on Thousand Trails, for example, there's some pretty cool resorts and it can be a lot of fun. Um, there's also other groups besides Thousand Trails that you can join. My only advice in those scenarios would be that uh, be careful which one you join. It, typically, once you join, you're you're joined until you can sell it to somebody, and sometimes they're not that easy to sell. Um, you have to pay a yearly dues no matter what. So be careful on which one you pick. Pick something that is going to work with you and cover the areas that you want to go into. Uh, one of our complaints about Thousand Trails is that you know we're kind of limited on you know where we can actually use it and so because of that you know we we had it for the one year but we we're not going to renew because we're not around any place that thousand trails is of value to us and so you have to make that decision kind of figure out where that's going to actually be for you but there's a lot of different clubs out there and so you can join a lot of different areas and just figure out the areas that you love to to uh, visit and stay at so I'm hoping that this helps you as far as maybe thinking about RV parks, uh, part of full-time living. Uh, there's only a few different options. You know, you're either going to boondock or you're going to go stay at uh, like RV parks, or you know, you got campgrounds and things like that too. Uh, campgrounds are typically very limited on the number of days that you can stay, and overall, you know, things can get expensive. And so, if you're going to stay at different places, check to see what their long-term uh, rates are they're going to typically they're going to have a one night rate is going to be quite a bit uh, weekly rates you're going to save typically at least one night if you go if you buy into it at a week and if you stay for a month that rate's going to even be cheaper uh, than that so at least that's three different ways that you can actually get into an rv park without spending a ton of money and then you can kind of enjoy that and that's that's gonna be the case with RV parks. Anyway, hopefully that uh, gives you some different ideas. Uh, we are getting ready to leave. Uh, we are darn close to uh, finishing everything up here and moving on, so we will be doing a video here. Uh, our next video actually will be about what we've decided, you know, where we're going this summer and how we're going to handle uh, especially the uh, price of gas so so stay tuned for our next video in that series um, to figure out exactly where we're going and how we're mapping out our trip and uh, we'll kind of give you some heads up on that so but in the meantime hopefully this gives you some pointers on uh, being full-time and living in an RV park thanks for watching and uh, we'll just plan on catching you down the road somewhere and if not it will just be on our next video so take care